Hey everyone, it's Robert Hall and in today's video we'll be going over how to use the Godox 8200. Now for starters, the 8200 does come included with its own stand attachment that can attach to either of these quarter 20 threads onto a stand, but for stability and compatibility purposes, I recommend instead using the Godox Bones Mount S-Bracket. Not only is this a very secure connection, but it also allows you to attach to any Bones mount modifier, just increasing the compatibility of this product with any soft boxes. And it works for speed lights too. So we're gonna start by sliding the 200 into the S bracket. And tightening it down on top. Now when facing the display on the left hand side, you have the power switch. You can use this to turn the light on. On the right side of the display, there is a battery release. Just push it forward and the battery will slide out. When you push the battery in, just make sure to press it all the way down in so that it clicks into place and you're ready to go. Now we're gonna go over the back of the device here, but if you're instead looking for how to connect this to a trigger to get it to work wirelessly, then you can watch my videos linked in the description below. On the top right, you have a test button. If you press it, it will fire the flash at the power level that it's at. To the left of that, you have the group slash channel button. Pressing the group button will advance between the five groups, A through E. Holding this button will access the channel, which once it's blinking, you can switch using this dial. Press set to confirm. When nothing else is selected, this dial will simply change the power level of the flash, something that you can do remotely if using a compatible trigger. The bottom right button will trigger the modeling lamp. Now a note here, there are three different heads that are compatible with the flash, the Fresnel head, the bare bulb, and the round head. The bare bulb does not have a modeling lamp. The Fresnel head has one level of modeling lamp, and the round head has three different levels of brightness on the modeling lamp. Holding this button, We'll turn on high speed sync, which you can see with an H up here. You should never have to press this button. If you're using a compatible trigger, then high speed sync will initiate automatically from the trigger. So you'll never have to come here and press this button to turn high speed sync on. The bottom left button is a mode button, which allows you to advance between manual, stroboscopic mode, and TTL. This is another change that you can make wirelessly and the only reason that you'd have to press it on here is if you're using it with another type of trigger system such as a pocket wizard plugged into its sync jack. Now you can control stroboscopic functions from the back here. If we're in stroboscopic where we see multi at the top and we press set, we can change the hertz which is the number of flashes per second and if we press set again, we can now change the total number of flashes on the left here. So if you wanted five flashes per second for a total of 10 flashes for a two second exposure, then this is what you would set up. Note the limits of flashes per second as well as total flashes will change as you increase the output of the strobe. And stroboscopic mode is limited to a quarter power and below. You'll see that there's a Z to the side of the mode button. That's the hold function of this button. So if we hold it, we are turning wireless on or off. So when toggled on, you'll see that there's a wireless symbol in the top left corner along with the channel information. This means that the light is ready to receive a wireless signal from any compatible transmitter. And if it's turned off, then now this light is not looking to receive any signal. So this is what you would want to keep it on if you had a pocket wizard plugged into the side here. Going back to the test button, if you hold it, you're going to open the custom functions menu. There's an F1 through F6 option, so each of these makes a different change on the device and you can use the scroll wheel to navigate between them. Starting with F1, this turns the beep on or off. So when on, if we hit the test button, now there's a beep sound letting us know that it has recycled. F2 is whether or not optical slave is on. So this red bar up here is an optical sensor. If it sees another flash with the optical slave on, then it's going to flash itself. We can leave that off if we're triggering this wirelessly. But if we go over to S1, that means any flash that it sees, this flash itself is going to fire. So this is a way that you can trigger it remotely without any other transmitter equipment. And if instead we change to S2, the second option, it's going to ignore the pre-flash from any TTL trigger. So if you're using a CLS system and you're trying to trigger this remotely, it will ignore the pre-flash but fire along with the real flash. 
F3 is standby time, you can leave it off and the light will stay on until its battery dies, or you can select between 30, 60, and 90 minutes as times where it will stay on, but it will turn off once it hits that threshold. F4 allows you to trigger a radio delay, so this is a delay between when it receives the fire signal and when it actually fires the flash, and you can modify this by hundredths of a second, I think all the way up to 30 seconds. This is useful if you're trying to use hypersync with it instead of high speed sync. F5 is a masking function. I've got a dedicated video on this that you can watch in the top right corner about the alt masking function, but this simply allows you to choose whether it is first or second in the masking sequence. This system is great for any type of product photographer or catalog photographer if you're looking to create complex masks, so check that out if you're doing that type of work. F6 is whether or not the T.1 flash durations will display, so we're going to turn that on, and now if we go to the main menu, now we can see the T.1 flash duration at this power level. This is a great way to see the action stopping potential of this light at various power levels. The lower that the power level gets means the faster the flash duration will be and therefore it'll be better at stopping motion. The last thing to go over is how to change between the three different heads available for this light. So if we pull this back right here, that's going to release the head. Pressing up, we'll click it out and now it's off and we'll grab the H200R round head for it. We're going to make sure all four of these pins are lined up. I'm gonna press them in until it sits flush, and then push down, and boom, you're ready to go. I hope this tutorial on the Godox 8200 helped you out. If it did, please leave this video a like. If you'd like to see more videos on the Godox products, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions on this light, leave them in the comments below. Until next time, keep on shooting.